Welcome back to Motor Mouse Garage, guys. So today what we're going to be working on is we're going to be working on resealing the front hubs, rebuilding the front hubs, as well as the front wheel bearings. Um, the driver's side front wheel bearing is uh, it's got some play in it, so I'll show you that. But with that being said, let's get right into it. All right, guys. So here I'm going to show you what a bad wheel bearing looks like. So this works for all like free floating axles or uh, independent front suspension usually. So basically what you're going to do is you're going to check the tire with it jacked in the air on jack stands of course. And you're going to just kind of move this back and forth and check for any play which it does have a little bit but how you can really tell is the up and down motion. So like this, I'm just going to rock it back and forth and you see how this wheel is moving it's not supposed to do that it's not supposed to rock back and forth so that means more than likely your wheel bearing is going to be bad so a good example an example of a good wheel bearing will show on the other side and it should have no play at all so you see on this side i'm going to do the same thing i did to the other side and it doesn't move at all in any direction other than some tie rod movement but that's normal in the front so that's how you can tell the difference if your wheel bearings are bad or not. We're still going to do both sides because I've got the seal kit for both sides. You might as well just do it in pairs, right? Same process for both sides. I'll walk you through on one side. Uh, there's a little bit of play. It's not as much as I thought. Brake pads look pretty good. Rotors look pretty good. This is my first time looking at this, by the way. There's definitely some movement though. More than I would like to see. Gotta check everything because everything's loose on this vehicle. So, these back caliper bolts, oh my lord. That bolt is just like all the way out here, so that's cool. This bolt was like all the way out already. So either that bolt's just really dirty and they didn't clean it, or these threads are kind of messed up on the hub so it's like an adventure every time I dive into this thing I also have I also have new tie rod ends that we might replace because we got to take them off anyway so this bolt was just kind of sort of in there but I think it's just because it was super dirty um, you know doesn't nothing surprises me on this on this vehicle anymore yeah, so that one caliper bolt was just kind of almost in there, but like not quite. Oh man, the stuff you find on used vehicles never, never ceases to amaze me. Okay, let's expedite this process. This is like a totally different bolt then. Same thread pitch. I just think this bolt is extremely crusty and dirty. I think it's the same thread pitch, yeah. Looks like it. I'm also probably gonna grease these brake pads because they've been squealing on me. I'm not sure which side. Okay, so I'm going to grab a little bungee and tie this off to the uh, Coil spring here because I want to get this out of the way without damaging the brake line, which is no doubt probably 30 years old and should be replaced. These brake lines are due for a replacement, guys. Don't hate me too much, but I don't have any right now. I'm gonna run this bottom bolt into this hub just to kind of see if these threads are completely screwed. I think it's just the bolt. I think we got lucky. Let's see. Okay, not the greatest threads. Didn't damage the bolt though, so I think those threads are just super dirty. So, what I'll probably do 
is clean up the threads on this bolt because they're pretty gross. And then chase it a couple more times with a good bolt because I don't have a tap set. So I'm just gonna try to tap it with the bolt, which sometimes works. You just gotta be really careful not to like overheat the bolt or anything like that or break the bolt. Um, when I get this hub off of here, I will uh, spray some lubricant in there and try to clean it up, maybe with a wire brush or something, as best as I can. But for right now, now what we can do is remove this dust cap right here. Then we have a snap ring here, which this is, these are the wrong snap ring pliers. Oh, these are greasy already. Um, but Basically, we're just looking to expand this and pull it out here. These are, like I said, I don't have the right pliers to do this. So I'm kind of like trying to cheat the system here with snap ring pliers. It is a snap ring, but it's a different kind of snap ring. I think I might have to get a flathead to, to work up underneath here. Cleaning this off to get better access to it because it's pretty greasy already, which this job is going to get pretty dirty. There we go. Okay, what we got to do now this axle's free. Uh, we have to remove these 12 mil bolts. What you want to do is you want to gently tap um, on each one of these, not the studs themselves, but like right behind it on this flange. take off this little flange here. Now what we have to do is we have to take this whole hub and rotor assembly off. And to do that, we need to basically remove this axle nut. So it has locking tabs. And when I, when I take these off, I'll show you uh, what they look like. But essentially, they're, you can see a little bit right here possibly that there's this bent over tab. And that's just to keep the, the nut in place. So I'm gonna start cleaning this up. I'm gonna get my drain pan uh, and just start spraying this down with brake cleaner so I can kind of show you guys a little bit better. You can see right here we have one of those tabs. Um, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take like a chisel end uh, or I don't recommend using screwdrivers because that's not what screwdrivers are for, but I understand, I've done it before. If you only got a screwdriver, so be it. Whatever gets the job done. So we just want to bend that tab back. And I'm just going to kind of make sure there's not another one. Sometimes you can bend two of them. Uh, it doesn't look like there is. I'm hoping this nut isn't chewed up from someone trying to take this off without this 54 millimeter Toyota axle nut socket, which is not. And these aren't super tight. Uh, they're, they're really not. It should definitely be tighter than that, though. But these nuts are not tight on here at all. So I don't know if I have a new one of these. So essentially, I'm just going to put this off to the need to clean side. Uh, I think I do have a new set of them with my new kit from Marlin Crawler, but I'm not 100% sure. So I'm just going to clean as I go here. Now you can start to see this little lock ring right here and this you can just bring them back out and i do have another set of these for sure i made sure that came with the kit and now let's get our socket in here again well let's clean again no shortage in brake cleaner today folks there we go yeah and this guy was not very tight either granted tightness is kind of relative for these because there's no, there is a torque spec, but 
they're based off of preload, which I have an interesting way to do preload because you basically you have to measure the rolling resistance of the hub when you put it all together again dude i don't know how old this grease is but it is very gross more gross than usual and it smells terrible okay so now our hub is ready to come off uh which is this whole assembly is ready to just pull right out and we're going to set it aside for now and we're going to focus on the um basically the axle itself so I'm just gonna pull this off. Ideally, you wanna stick your thumbs in here to catch the bearing. It doesn't really matter because we're replacing the bearings. And then all of this will just come right out. And I can just set it aside. Well, the good news is these wheel bearings have at least been serviced semi-recently. Um, they didn't do a very good job, <laughs> I don't think, but you know. What else is new here? So again, I'm just gonna start cleaning as I go. We're gonna leave that hub for later. I'm gonna take that inside and I'm gonna work on it in there, uh, pack the bearings and all that other stuff. But right now we're just gonna focus on the axle portion. We're gonna clean all this off because we're gonna put some new grease on here. This job can take a little while, but it is 100% worth not losing your tire on the highway or on the trail or something crazy like that, which can happen. I've seen it before. It's pretty gnarly when it happens and it causes a ton of damage. So don't neglect doing this, guys. So now what we gotta do is we gotta take this uh, plate off, which I have another one in the kit that I have. And I think these are probably 14 mil, maybe. 15, 14. Yeah, so these are 14 mil bolts. See if uh, this little snap on guy can get it off. Uh, and now we need to get this whole spindle off, which is gonna require a couple light taps with a hammer. A fun day <laughs> so I have new bushings for here too um, and they're the old style bushings so I know I'll talk about it when we get there but I have the the original bushings I don't have the roller bearing style um, so we're gonna put this to the side because this needs to be clean as well so now again I'm gonna start cleaning as I go now we have to take out this is the axle and this is pretty long because it goes all the way to the diff on the inside. So essentially what we're going to do, we're going to try to pull this guy out. Um, ideally, so there's some flat spots on here. I need to turn it to the right. It's kind of hard to do that because it's tied to the other axle. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this spindle right here and I'm going to try to rotate this axle by hand. There we go. I'm going to feel, I can feel the flat spot right here. And we're just about lined up. It's going to take some, some messing with guys. Oh, I need to take that guy out. Good call. So I felt the sensor in there. Um, that needs to come out before the actual axle comes out. Should be able to start pulling this axle out. Yeah, there we go. Comes right out. So it doesn't look like my differential's leaking crazy. Um, I'm gonna need to stand up and pull this axle out and hopefully it doesn't start leaking everywhere if it does you know not a big deal I'll just run and get some some diff oil give yourself some room I'm gonna remove this guy oh yeah that's what she said okay so I'm gonna put this in the garage so 
so it doesn't get covered in dust. We're gonna clean it up. I just wanna get it out of the way for right now. Now, we've got a couple things we gotta do. We gotta disconnect this ball joint and I'm gonna inspect them after I do that because I have replacements. Um, I didn't really want to get an alignment and I think I can get away with not doing it, but I don't know yet. We'll see if they're bad. I have a feeling they are. And if they are, I'll just replace them while I'm here. So what we need to do is we need to loosen this, get this tie rod off and out of the way. We need to loosen these nuts down here. There's four of them. And so I do have new shims for this top bearing, right? But according to another channel that I watched do this, um, what you can do is leave this in place and essentially you won't have to uh, re-shim this. Um, I can, cause I have, so basically you need like a, a little pull gauge to test like how much resistance is on each side. So I have replacement shims. So I might do that. I'm not sure yet. Uh, we'll find out when we get there. But first, we need to get rid of this tie rod end. And hopefully it's not too chewed up. Uh, I don't know what animal decided this was a good idea to put this cotter pin like this. But, you know, I might replace these anyway, to be honest. I already got them. Ugh. Basically, just want to pull that out. Yeah, that's not how cotter pins work, guys. Don't don't do that. I might have to get a new cotter pin. I'm just gonna replace them. Typically, how I handle these is I will find a spot underneath somewhere where this wants to to settle. Is the easiest to find a spot to pry up on, maybe from this side. Well, all I'm doing is I'm smacking this with a hammer. I'm not smacking this, I'm definitely not smacking that. And I'm just trying to basically shock this so this ends up popping up, but this needs tension on it. I'm gonna use my floor jack to create some tension on the pry bar. When you're doing this, you wanna pay attention to where your pry bar is and make sure that it's not like slipping off anything so you don't like damage anything. Looks like we're making some progress, but it's in there. There it is. See? It just takes an exuberant amount of tension. And we're free now. Let's uh, de-escalate this pry bar situation we got here. Now, if you don't have a big berth of pry bar, just get a tool. Because trying to get it out there, trying to get it out of there by just hammering on it, it's not going to work. You need a ton of tension, as you are able to see. I think I'm going to take this off and just do the do the tension gauge because this is way too tight. This preload is. I already know it's only supposed to be like I think like 12 or some pounds of of force. Uh, I have like. <laughs> I have a fish scale that I'm going to try to use to, to measure that. It's pretty much the same thing as a spring tension gauge because it uses a spring to measure tension of gravity. I'm going to start scooping this grease out of here because uh, all of this is going to be replaced. And then I'm going to start removing these, this guy, this underarm. Um, I've got some Loctite for these because I know these are loose. Um, I've actually, they were finger tight when I, before. Uh, when I first got this. Alright, so we've got some bolts, four bolts underneath here. 
Now these are decently tight, I believe. They should be 17s, yeah. Uh, they're the same as the, can the, the type that came in this hub. Uh, and you just get them out the same way. You can hammer down on this guy and they'll start coming out on you. They have two different types. They've got this washer and they've got the cone style, which as soon as I get this last bolt off, I'll show you guys. So you see, these also have cone style washers. Just like that hub I showed you. I got two off. All those need to be cleaned. So there's a bearing in here, and this bearing is basically what holds this in, and it's gonna require some finagling to get out. Yeah, so a bearing rides on this surface, so that's why it's a little difficult. So now, I'm gonna take this top cover off. So don't be dumb like me. <laughs> Make sure you remove this seal back here, which should be all 10 mil bolts. Uh, and essentially it just needs to, so this is where like your wipers and stuff are. Um, I should have done that before I removed all this stuff, but there's bolts that go all the way around here and your wipers and felts are back there. And here I was wondering why that wasn't coming off like a dummy, but it happens. Not everyone's perfect, right? wipers and felts that come off and the seals and all that goodness and now this will of course magically slide right off more stuff to clean yay and take this bearing out it doesn't look terrible there's a little bit of play in there we've got new ones i ain't worried about them we got new races too we've got all new stuff guys it's great. So I'm gonna start taking this stuff off, which this is just a little split ring, which I have a new one of these, I believe. I'm gonna hold on to it just in case I don't. I'm pretty sure I, I have that. Um, then we got the rubber piece right here, which I know I've got new, and the felt piece. And I think I even have new half moons, so are all gonna be great to have new. And this felt comes off. Blech. It's very gross. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean up this little ball. I'm gonna clean up the inside and I'm gonna try to get this seal out, this inner seal, because I've got some Marlin Crawler HD seals. Shout out to Marlin Crawler for making some pretty awesome seals uh, from what I can tell. But essentially I'm just gonna get as much of this grease off as I can and then just douse this thing in brake cleaner because I've got 12 cans of this stuff guys. Alright, so now what we got to do is you got to knock out these races for these bearings up top here. And ideally, if you have a brass punch or brass drift, whatever you want to call it, I don't, but I do have this steel chisel. You want to be very careful when you're doing this with steel though, because what you can end up doing is marring where these, um, these bearing races sit. So I'm going to be a little gentle, tap these guys out. I'm just gonna work both sides very slowly, very carefully. One race, and then we gotta do the same this top and there's actually relief cuts so you can 
tap these out. So when we clean out that, again, this is all about cleanliness, guys. We're gonna shove this full of grease again, but I'm gonna get this as clean as possible. So, it's a little trick with some channel lock pliers. Let's give this guy a little tap. That's how you get a seal out with channel locks uh, when you don't have a seal puller. So basically now we're at the point where in order to put all this back together, uh, we need new parts. All right guys, so here we have some Marlin Crawler HD, which I'm assuming stands for heavy duty, inner axle seals. And so these are flush mount and it looks like they have a longer sealing surface, so it seals a little bit farther back in the axle. So I have about a 35 mil impact socket. You can see that fits around the diameter relatively well. I'm gonna put some, some of this gear oil just around the outside lip to make it a little bit easier on me to get in there and seal in here. Uh, and then once I get it in there, I'll do the same thing to this inside seal. So I'm just going to gently get this in here. Using the right skills. Dun, dun, dun. Well, as you can see, guys, I uh, ordered the wrong part. Uh, totally my fault, not Marlin Crawler's fault. Definitely mine. But essentially what that means is we're going to split this video into two parts. The second part is gonna be me putting it back together uh, and doing a lot of cleaning. But that's gonna do it for us for this episode. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. Feel free to check out any of my other videos, like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. And I hope you have a, or had a very Merry Christmas and you guys have a wonderful new year. See you guys in 2023 with more content and Peace out.